The Court of Public Opinion is a part of the Amateur Radio Network. All right, so we just did a final broadcast of the Moonlight Lounge, and I thank God that we've been able to do that because from here it's open mic, and we can just kind of shoot from the hip. Let me say something to those people, and I, I'm going to say this with all due respect. I know there's a lot of people who are well-meaning or chasing after the big story regarding abuse victims and survivors. I'm going to say this one more time. There are people in comment sections that have no business interrupting people's lives like this. Okay, it's one thing to have a cause. It's one thing to care about the people in it. It's another to be arrogant and ignorant to real victims and survivors. I have to address this. I don't necessarily want to argue with a detective or police officers, but when there comes a point when people address these stories, there are sensitive matters that are very complicated and very confusing to the victim. So last thing I need to hear in a comment section is ignorant remarks. And posting pornography in my comment section is not the way to go about it. Let me say this one more time. And as for anyone else, I'm not going to argue with you. I am, and I can say this because I legally can back up my facts. And I can say that this is a very complicated issue when you talk about child abuse and predators and issues around this. From the therapeutic level, it's a different story. But in a public arena, I realize that social media is a public platform, okay? We put it in context, the court of public opinion, because it belongs here. Because there are standards and there are principles here. That a lot of people are ignoring. They're chasing after the story. I get it. the people that are in the public arena that have these issues. That is a legal matter. That's one thing. But when we talk personally about what's going on with the families that are coping with child abuse and sexual abuse. Okay. In context, I recognize that a lot of people are patting each other on the back for good hard work. But one time or another, you're going to recognize the victims and survivors, and that would include some of us. I respect the fact that people are working hard, but you seem to be forgetting about the survivors and the families. First of all, no one's asked permission of the victim survivor if it's okay to go there. And let me say to those people that, and I appreciate there's a lot of good people with a lot of great channels, but some of your subscribers and some of the comments they make is uncalled for, Okay. There are people that have really suffered here. And I know that you all have a channel and you can also block some of your comments out of your comment section. There are ignorant remarks made towards victims and survivors. It defeats the whole point of helping victims and survivors. If you're going to really help victims and survivors, start showing that you're really there to help them. Instead of chasing after investigations and stories. And yes, I'm going to point out the obvious. I know it's an important issue. You can't take it upon yourselves and, and you know, and, and argue with a victim and survivor. Okay, please understand that. Okay, there are complicated concerns here. That's why there is a certain amount of privacy that we would ask that somebody, some of you take in consideration. Yes, you have titles and professional, and yes, you applaud each other. Yes, you invite each other into your talk shows. Yes, you guys hold leadership positions. So I have a higher expectation of you guys. Okay? just like you would have of me. There are principles here. Who am I? I'm gonna tell you who I am. I am the granddaughter of a Pittsburgh police attorney in the 1960s. Yes, our case goes back that far. I know these cases. Unfortunately, I was born to know these things. It's just one of those things. It wasn't that I went and became an investigator. I grew up this way. So it's become conditioned. And, you know, just to me, it's kind of the same as a politician, their kids, they grow up in it. Some of us have been the ones that have been the most affected by those stories, by the way. The children are. And it's not who you think it is. A lot of people think these kids have just come out of this hiding place. Most of the people that you're going to deal with are people who have been raised around people who have status. Most of the time, you don't hear about those stories, okay? Yes, the police officers, investigators take their work home, and yes, it affects their family. So to the point that it even endangers their family. I don't know that I can say that per se, 
personally, but I know it affected my mother. And I know that she carried a lot of those problems into her marriages and into her family life. To what degree? I don't think she knew about it. I think that most of us who have parents that grew up and had problems growing up, they, my mom came from an affluent family, as I stated. My grandfather, attorney, Pittsburgh police, my, my grandmother was a socialite. So this was common to be around the, the movers and shakers, if you will, the Rothschilds, as you call it, the melons. That was normal for my, for my childhood. That was something I heard on a regular basis. So I grew up this way. And there was a lot of expectations put on us. We were supposed to achieve something in life. We were the higher achievers. And a lot of times what I wanted to do is just be a normal kid. I wanted to grow up just like anybody else, but I knew my situation was not the same. I knew that long before anyone, <clears throat> before I was you know, five and six, I knew my, my life was different than most average kids. I mean, I came from, what I believe is a political family. I, I mean, I've been around it, okay? And, you know, I wanted to have as much normal, but you couldn't put me in a situation. I, it just, my dad once told me, he goes, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. You're not a common person. I am not a common person. I'm gonna introduce myself, really, who I really am. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me, other than the fact that I just, what I addressed. I'm a third generation countess. My Family comes from the rooted in Austria and a Czechoslovakia. My, my great grandfather it has a castle of all things, so I, th I find that funny. Uh, you know, I always try to adapt to the norm, I, I knew I couldn't. Okay, it was really hard. I look, you know, oftentimes people said I was a lot like Princess Diana, I was very shy and backward. But when I grew up, that was what I knew, okay? I knew that I was still, an, a, a, as an American, I grew up and I, I've been around this all my life where that's what I heard, you know? I didn't know until years later I recognized that. When you hear the word, the melons, the Rothschilds, that's just becomes normal. I don't really think much of, of, of it. I didn't even really understand all the topics that you hear on YouTube. I didn't know all that. I didn't understand that. I just tried to live as much of a normal life as possible. But I didn't really tell people who I was. And not that I was going under disguise, because that's not what I was not, not trying to be incognito, but I was trying to adapt to a world that would not understand where I come from. And I, I found out that to be true every time. I grew up in, you know, around people that are affluent. I mean, that's the way it is. So for me to be poor and hungry and struggling and ask for help, that was so not like the way I was raised. You were raised never to accept a handout. You are from the elite family and elite families don't reach out and they don't end up on poverty. They don't end up on food stamps. They don't end up broke and struggling. But for me, that all changed in 1984 and 85. And when I hear these comments made by people who seem to think they know all about the issues regarding child pedophilia rings, I didn't know this stuff. I didn't understand. I still am learning to put this all together. I didn't have any elaborate career. I didn't have anything. I just was trying to do my best to graduate high school. And I see how many people will dump their friends over really minor petty things. And I'm sad to see that. I'm sad to see that none of us have really overcome or outgrew some things. I see it on Facebook. I see it on social media all the time. So really spare me. I don't want to hear your comments. If you're going to put degrading comments below, save it. This is only a conversation for people that want to hear it. I don't have time to be patting anybody on the back and applauding. You have no idea what the things that some of us have encountered. And I'm gonna to speak to those people that make those ignorant remarks in the comment section. I don't have time for your comments. You could go take a hike. And if you have people on your subscription list, I would ask you nicely, if these people are gonna participate in a conversation that is so serious, that the, 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 the last thing I have time is try to explain myself to you, all of you in some of your comment sections with some of your subscribers. They're not my subscribers because I haven't had, had only on a couple occasions and I've blocked them. I don't have time for this. 
what you have going on and some of the issues that I've dealt with, I can't speak to the ones that are current because they're not legally, you can't really argue a case until you actually have physical evidence. At least in our case, we can. We can argue our case because we went through the agonizing process of going to court. Yeah, and when they start attacking people, and when they start charging people with child pedophilia, when somebody's been wrongfully accused, and the pedophile is take, you know, gets off lightly, and instead of arguing the case, that which really needed to be argued in, in many of our county courts, and I could say this, because at least I can say, I can use some of the, illustrate the point that I am from a family like this. I was supposed to be an attorney. I was supposed to, I should have been the commissioner of the Pittsburgh police. That's really where I should have ended up. But that's not how it really works out. You know what I mean? When you talk about the crime, the sex crimes against children, when you talk about sex crimes against families, how, how it wrecks a home, wrecks a family, and then I read these comment sections, no wonder we're not getting it anywhere. No wonder the victims don't get justice because people have idle time on their hands to criticize and attack the wrong people. And if you're really there to support victims and you're not gonna be critiquing every word I say, I don't have time for this. There are victims that really need to be rescued. Yeah, I do not have time to entertain people that are just spending their time interviewing each other and applauding each other. You really haven't done the real work. Many of us have already done the work and I applaud Honeybee. I did the work that Honeybee did 20 years ago. So no, this is not a crowd pleaser. I don't know how you end up there. You're talking about some serious topics. So when I listen to Reddit and voter vote and I, I, I applaud their courage. It took a long time to get to where I'm at. I'm 30 years ahead of a lot of you. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with experience. This is one area I understand better than anybody. And I, I'm doing this with respect to consider that people really take in consideration the kind of crimes that you're dealing with. When you deal with sex crimes, when you deal with children who have been running away from home because of abuse, the last thing I need to be listening to is somebody in your comment section, and I'm listening to some of you, and I, I follow your, I subscribe to your posts. You don't know, have to know, you don't know who's subscribed to your posts and who's watched your posts, but there are people that are important to have, and I can attest to that. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of dis, disappointed. I will say that. I see how people easily just chuck things off as nothing. You understand that there are people behind those faces and that there are emotions and are people really upset about this issue. So I, I don't take this topic casually. I know this is not an entertaining discussion, but I have to have it. This is the appropriate place, and I would appreciate that all of you take in consideration. This is not just an open-ended discussion. What you see going on in the public and what you see is going on privately are probably very different. No, there are victims that really are in cages. There really are victims that are left in these situations. And it is life and death. And I don't have time for this idle, petty conversation, petty fights on Facebook. I don't. And nor, sh nor should any of you. I take very serious to this issue. So when I have people debate with me, I'm sorry, but I have the case logs right here. And I have the files, and I have the child abuse files right here. You can't argue with me with these cases. I know what's going on. And I know that the county turns their back at these things. I know that they would rather look out for the, the foster father if he's in charge with abuse. I've seen it firsthand. I saw that a foster dad hit my, my brother. I see what they do. I see how some of you are when you attack somebody. How dare you? You have crossed the line. If you want to help, that's one thing. But if you want to attack people, take a hike. Go. Leave. Do whatever you want to do. But don't attack me and then start sending pedophilia posts and, and arguing with me on this issue. I know this issue better than some of you ever. I've been doing this long before some of you even came out of diapers. So please spare me with your smart-ass remarks. I don't have time for it. I have, I have done this. I've, I've gone, gone to bed. My heart palpitating for the, for the danger that we faced. So I don't have time for this idle chatter. With some people, that, they, they cloak themselves, they pat themselves on the back, good for you. You're doing the hard work, but you have no idea what it is to go to bed at night and wake up knowing that your sister and your children or somebody in your life is missing. 
So I don't have time for you idiots. I don't have time to argue with you. You want to argue with somebody? You argued with the wrong person because we lived it. I woke up two weeks wondering where my sisters were, missing. So I don't have time for this idle chatter. If you have time to sit there and dismiss me, good luck. Good luck to you because it, it, it ends here. You aren't going to get any closer to somebody that's been missing. I was a missing person. I understand this issue. So I don't have time for people to blow us off. I don't have time for you either. You know, I, I can do the same thing that anyone else do. You want to challenge me? When I walk into a room where a man is putting a gun into somebody's head, that man had to be, that, that was raped. That young man was now older. And we confronted his pedophile in Reno, Nevada. Some things happen for reasons I don't know. I don't know why I walked in on it. Luckily for me, I was never molested, thank God. Luckily for me, I had enough of a healthy home environment that I didn't have that experience. But for some reason or another, like I said, where I started and where I end, some things you're just born to do. I didn't ask for this privilege. This is not a privilege to me, but it's a privilege to work with the victims and survivors of pedophilia and child pornography. I have been doing this. I've wrote some of you emails. You just don't have time to talk to me about it, but you have time to talk to entertain yourselves and pat yourselves on the back. I want to see when you guys are really going to do something rescue. Don't talk about it. This is not about getting more subscribers and likes, please. You're here to help the victims, that's one thing. But some of you guys go on and on about how hard you're working. I know this is hard work. No one asked you to do some of this. But some of you, you take volunteer for something. You want credit, you want all this credit. The credit belongs to the real survivors, the real people that are doing the survivor therapy and work. The county courts, the, the attorneys, the, dis, the district attorneys. The child advocates, the ones that really do the reports, not the people just on the internet. But I, I congratulate those people because it's a privilege to know those people courageous enough to confront this because every family, every parent should know how serious this issue is. When, there, when it comes to missing children, it should be a priority. And no, I do not have time to argue with people from high school who disregard me. They didn't know, they didn't take the time to get to know me then. Spare me. Go ahead and unfriend me. I don't have time for this. I know how serious this issue is. And I know there are parents right now that have missing children. That should be your priority. I worked with the Jessica Lunsford Foundation in 2009. I had no idea I was going to be in the situation I'm in today. I had no idea. So when people are ignorant with me, they don't know anything about me. They don't know the important issues that we face. So no, I, I have to keep it in perspective. But I, have to, I don't have time for idle chatter. I don't, I don't wanna do it. I did a radio show because that's what I wanted to do. That's really my career ambition, but this is something different. When I start to see kids that are missing and the epidemic is growing every day and all people have, they don't have any time to go find these kids. They don't have any time. They have plenty of time to chatter and talk among themselves and criticize and critique somebody. You're better off just finding something to do. I guess because people freely can go on the internet and say what they want and don't think there's any consequences of that. I hope that's not the case. See, we grew up in an, in an era where you still respect the people even if you disagree. But at least we're gonna tell you like it is. We're gonna tell you straight, sh shoot straight from the hip. We're gonna talk to you directly. There is no passive remarks. I don't have time to applaud to people when they're abusing children. I don't have time to give them praise. They didn't earn that praise. So when I see people that are giving people too much credit, I mean that. No, I don't have time for people to give each other credit when there's nothing been done yet. You know what? When some of you can really prove that there's something to be done that's been done here, then we'll talk about praising people. But this, all, these, all these investigations, what people need to keep in mind is about the victims and survivors. It's not about you. And if you make this about yourself, you're really not in it for the right reasons, okay? Check yourself daily if this is something you can do because I don't know that any of us could stomach it. See, we walked in on it. <laughs> so we were confronted with whether we wanted to or not. If I had to make a choice over this, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
because I've cried a lot of nights and I've lost a lot of friendships over this. Yeah, and some of them, I don't know where they are. I know I've also been attacked for not, for so many stories and so many things that have been told about me. And I, I personally don't have time for it. I know at the end of the day, we saved kids' lives. And at the end of the day, we successfully saved these kids' lives. So when people talk about us and make comments about us, take a hike. Because we actually can account for the lives that we've saved in this. And I see a lot of people taking credit. I see a lot of people taking credit for work they have not done. Thank you for listening.